Okay, well, so we're live. This is um, the first time we've done this in a while. I think it was a couple months ago, right? Or it might have been half a year ago when we uh, last uh, did, did this sort of thing, and it wasn't uh, formal the way it is now. This isn't really formal either, but this is a much better setup, I think, uh, the way I have it now, um, which yeah, is ironic. Great. We're geographically separated, and, right. and it's a better setup. This is <laughs> so, the only way we could do it right now. Yeah. So anyway, welcome um, for those for anybody who's watching this now, or will be watching it later. This is my mom, Denise. Um, she is a therapist. She is in Pennsylvania. I'm in California. Uh, but we kind of wanted to uh, get together today to just talk about uh, Martin Luther King day the celebration what it means but also touch on uh current events uh uh politics what's going on in the world right now in 2021 uh january at the time of this recording um and we'll see where it goes from there i guess part of the motivation uh for me for making this was just uh the emotions that i've been feeling watching what's going on in the country right now um but uh, we kind of got together and decided that today would be a good day for us to just vent and, and figure out why we can't right now come together as a country and maybe what the way forward uh, in doing that will be. So, um, so yeah, let's, we'll just take it from there. Uh, Martin Luther King Day. Absolutely, it, it is across the country in most civilized cities, you know, um, people are celebrating not only people of color, everyone who gets what he stood for um, and how much he brought to this country. And I was just thinking about um, the Voting Rights Act of 1964 mm -hmm. and the whole, not the whole, but one of the major themes of that was so that people of color and in particular at that time, Black people, uh, they could have the right to vote. They wouldn't be discriminated against. That segregation would be gone and so on. Um, and here we are uh, 50 something odd years later. And I wonder, I wonder how much progress we're making given what we're seeing, uh, what we saw 12 days ago at the Capitol. Yeah, and um, that's a good point because um, at, at one of the questions I wanted to ask you was with respect to race relations since uh, 1964, 65, 68, the 60s, really the whole decade we associate with the civil rights movement. Since that time, um, do you get the sense that race relations have improved or um, did they improve for a while and then regress? Um, how, how are race relations today compared to the 1960s? That's an excellent question. Um, but I, before I answer that, I also have to um, remind you again, I was raised in New York City. So um, race, you, you saw so many people of different races that basically were trying to get on with the business of life. So I didn't experience racism so much, but I heard my parents talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to say by the 80s and 90s, it was just so many different uh, movements of freedom happening. You know, um, women were ha held stronger positions. Um, gay rights activism was going on. It was a lot of stuff going on uh, promoting, you know, freedom of being, so to speak. So were race relations better? I always worked around people from different cultures and I still have friends from other cultures. So given, given what's going on, I would have to say they were better than in the respect that, and I think we said this before, if you were a big racist in New York City, you, you stayed in the closet. It was not your time to shine. And that's what's so confusing, not really confusing, because those of us who knew 
Donald Trump four years ago are were not surprised by anything that happened. But it's what's confusing is that it has been allowed to go this far. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of things we need to look at because you you talked about growing up in New York City, which is which is not necessarily um, reflective of the entire country, you know, and so we we have to contextualize it via location. New York City in the 1980s, you might say, was less racist than Atlanta, Georgia, in the 1980s, right? Um, at the same time, you had Donald Trump, who was a prominent and well-known businessman uh, in the 1980s, the 70s, 80s, and 90s in New York City, and he was well-known as a racist then. So for people who were, grew up in New York, it's not surprising that he uh, became what he was as president, although um, some people today may be shocked by it. Let's talk about Donald Trump for a second. Is Donald Trump a racist? Wait, wait, wait. before we do. I want to okay. amend something that I said sure. uh, in terms of racism, not feeling it on the day to day. Now, mm -hmm. racism in any major city, housing uh, discrimination, that was there. Just, you know, nobody would stand up and say, oh, I'm not letting you in because you're black. I'm not letting you in because you're Asian, you know. So racism was there, but it was more subtle. OK, go. Right. It was more subtle. And it was subtle in the sense that um, people who wanted to de deny housing to African-Americans or uh, Latinos or whatever, uh, they could do so in such a way to where they weren't necessarily calling them out by race, but more so uh, by class, um, by associating them with the drug culture, by saying we're denying you based on this, that, and the other, not necessarily race. And this is exactly what Donald Trump did in the 70s, which is why he was sued by the Department of Justice for racial discrimination against As soon black as you people. mentioned his name, as soon as you mentioned his name, that all came rushing back to my head, you know? Um, yeah, a lot of people don't remember that because like I said, we, we're from New York, so we know right. Donald Trump, we knew him before most of the country did. Um, and people who only know him as president or as candidate Trump when he was running aren't necessarily familiar with his history of racism and so, um, it, you know, if they don't remember that, then their history of Donald Trump begins when he becomes president, I think. Um, but I, that was leading to my question, is Donald Trump actually racist or is he just someone who um, catered to a particular demographic that uh, uh, does his rhetoric appeal to racists in such a way that he thinks it gets him votes or does he actually, uh, is he actually racist himself? What, what do you think about that? I think it's a combination of both. Because remember, this is the fool who said there are good people on both sides. And I think mm -hmm. at that point, a guy had uh, run his car into a group of protesters who were uh, black. Yeah, and some of them are some of them were black. Some of them were white. I think the woman that was killed white, right. was white, actually. Um, but yeah, so he did say that. But I guess my question is, did he say it because he wanted the Klan vote, so to speak, or did he say it because that's actually re representative of his views? Or is there any way to really know? I don't know if we could really know, but once he recognized that these are the people that are lining, lining up for you, he capitalized on it. Yeah. And he saw it as a way to move forward. I mean, he had to know or maybe he doesn't, he's such a fuck. But he had to know, I'm thinking, that there was a large group of people that kept going, D Donald Trump? You know, all of the issues with Hillary, you know, came out and, and y'all went with him? On what mm -hmm. planet did that sound like sound advice? Oh, that sounds reasonable, let's follow him. I, I, I don't, what happened? I think it was two things going on at the same time. I think a lot of his rhetoric was very clever. In, in some ways, Donald Trump is really intelligent. In other ways, he's really dumb at the same time. It's really weird. But his rhetoric was clever enough, I think, to appeal to that hidden, underground, closeted segment of America that 
are the white supremacists and the, the Nazis and the Klan and all of those people, Proud Boys, all these groups that are basically white supremacists. He was able to use his rhetoric in such a way that spoke to them without directly saying the N word, you know, so to speak. Right. While at the same time, because he he uh, used that type of rhetoric in the way that he did and covered it up, um, you know, he, he wouldn't say these black people, he wouldn't say these niggers, but he would say words like thugs, you know, um, you know, other word coded language to where a lot of people, I think it just went over their head what he was actually talking about, but the people he was talking to got what he heard was talking him. about. They heard him. They yeah. Got, yeah. They, they heard him. Um, but uh, the thing I think that floors me and most people about him who are not his supporters is that over the last four years, we saw his pattern of behavior uh, become more racist week after week after week. And um, he would just come back and say things that those of us who didn't support him would go, huh? How does that make sense? So that that kind of brings me to the, the, the whole Capitol incident. Those people. Um, and what this, the, the craziest thing for me were, I saw people of color in there, not a lot. Mm -hmm. But I saw a couple. There were people. definitely, there were definitely from the images I saw, um, it, it, what appeared to be a mass uh, group of white people, there was at least one or two black people in every frame. And so you figure if there was one black person for every 50 white people, that's yeah. still a lot of black people that, or Hispanic people. Been. Right? That's too many. That's too many. I, I, I didn't see that many, but I, I did see some. Maybe and it was, it maybe be, it was maybe. a little less. I could be exaggerating a little bit because maybe just the fact that I see one at all is so like over my head that it seems like the one is too many. And so maybe I've, you know, increased the one to 10 in my head, but. I think they kept showing the same one over and over Probably. again. Yeah. So, but. Every and your eyes are automatically like drawn. Huh? Yeah, your eyes, um, I think as a person of color, your eyes are automatically drawn to seek out how many people are color of color are gonna be in this crowd. And, and you immediately focus in on the one that happens to be there, you know, so. And okay, so we know this atrocious crime has been committed. Now, I don't well, have- Well, what actually, what actually happened? Because there's, believe it or not, I know you know what happened and I know what happened, but what actually happened is being disputed by people. They're trying to, there are people who are trying to deny that what happened at the Capitol on January 6th was, an insurrection, uh, an uprising against the government. Um, I think largely because they don't know what the word insurrection means, um, but I've spoken to numerous people who refuse to call that out as what it is. And they immediately have been making comparisons to that and the Black Lives Matter protests as though they're equivalent. Okay, so we go we're gonna do this right now just to, to, to work on that. You storm the uh, the Capitol, mm -hmm. you break windows, you kick in the door, you run through police officers, uh, and I know for sure that one of them died. A couple of people died, but one girl got shot because she was, you know, with the uh, rebels. The insurrectionists. <laughs> insurrectionists yeah. Is that what we're calling them? That's, um, what, I'm, that's what they are. You know, no, that's the, I, and some I, people I, aren't calling so many, them that but that's what they are. I'm saying there's so many names for these people, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm good with that. So yeah. they storm the Capitol building, they deface property, they, they um, go through private papers, taking photos. Mm -hmm. um, when does treason come into play? Well, it, yeah, and, and that's a, tricky thing and there's some legal mumbo jumbo there for the lawyers to figure out i doubt any of them will be actually charged with treason but uh they certainly were committing treasonous acts the funny thing is in their minds they didn't see it as treason 
which is weird, you know, and, and you mentioned everything that they had done. Yeah. They broke property. They, they uh, vandalized breaking and entering. Um, so they were someplace where they weren't supposed to be. And a lot of people might rush to try to make some sort of comparisons with what was going on at the black lives matter protest that some of them where they defaced property and burnt down police cars and all that. But really the difference for me is the motive and the intent. They, you know, they didn't just break into the Capitol with the intent of breaking windows and looking at papers. They were chanting, hang Mike Pence and asking where Nancy was, you know, exactly. they clearly went in there on a murder mission, you know, according to them. Yeah. So I, the two things, for me, the two things don't really compare, you know, and and just the motivation they had for going in there, which was spawned on by Donald Trump. He told them, you know, let's go down there. Uh, we need to take back our country with strength and make sure that Mike Pence does the right thing. They were trying to stop an election, you know, which yeah. is that's antithetical to the way that the U.S. government operates. They were clearly uh, going against the principles of the Constitution that's an insurrection that's rising up against the government you know um and that doesn't obviously that doesn't compare to what the black lives matter protests were um i saw i saw a facebook post today where someone said more people died in the black lives matter protest than died at the capitol only five people died at the capitol only yeah but not only does the number of people who died not determine whether it's an insurrection or not but the Black Lives Matter protests had been going on all year. There were like thousands of Black Lives Matter protests and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people at these different events. This was one incident we're talking about where five people died, you know? And the motive, like I said, was to overturn an election, which is by its very nature, anti-American. It's not like the people at the Black Lives Matter protests who were committing violence, most of which were peaceful, by the way. And by the way, a lot of the violence done at the Black Lives Matter protests were done by far right extremists like Kyle Rittenhouse, who brought uh, an M4 rifle and shot two of the protesters. They don't like to mention all of these details or give you that sort of context when they talk about how many people died at Black Lives Matter protests. But really, they're comparing two unlike, unequivocal in, in equivalent things, in equivalent, unequivalent. I'm not sure what the right word is, but you know what I mean. Is, you're right. You're right, though. They're, they're two separate things. And um, I don't even like to, to um, can, there is no comparison in my mind um, between people marching for Equality, I don't know, more than equality. Just, I don't know. I don't want to get killed yeah. by the police. Right. I mean, right. I mean, so one of the things that you, you and I had talked about a little bit, what was their ultimate motive? Just, I'm saying the people at the back of the line, mm -hmm. they, the, the ones in the front, they came through. Did they have a plan to just kick those windows in and you know climb up and do everything and get inside and look for nancy like you know by the time all of that happened nancy was going to be sitting there waiting for them um i mean i can tell you what i think and this yeah. is un unscientific just, but just based on everything that we saw from all of the video footage everything that we know about some of the people who finally have been arrested um, and their backgrounds. You have, you know, QAnon conspiracy theorists, you have far right leaders of the Proud Boys, all of these right. people showed up there. And so I do believe that there was a small number of people who had specific motives and goals to enter that building, to find the politicians that they had issues with um, and to uh, harm them. You know, that was clearly their stated goal while they were in the Capitol hunting for them. Um, as far as the rest of them, most of the people there, a lot of them were just sheep. You know, a, a lot of them were MAGA sheep who heard a speech from Donald Trump, decided to go to the White House or to the Capitol um, after being at the White House listening to a speech. They decided to take his advice, go down there and protest. And I think once they saw the more bolder ones, the ones who came there with a plan, right, actually right, making right. headway, they joined in because it's they the recognized the mentality. 
yeah, they recognize this as their chance to do something about the election that was, according to them, stolen. You know, right. so. But, okay, let's 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 talk about that a little bit. <laughs> stolen. Yeah. Um, if something is stolen, does that imply that it belonged to you in the first place? It was stolen um, from him. Yeah. So st stolen. Um, th this yeah. came from this came from Donald Trump's. The title of one of his rallies was the Stop the Steal rally. Right. right? Stop the Steal. Yes. And he named it that on purpose because uh, he's Donald Trump engineered this idea before the election even happened that he was going to claim fraud to convince people that if he lost, they would have to reject the results. And only if he won, could they accept the results, right? Yeah. It's exactly the same thing he did in 2016 before that election, when one of the moderators at the debates asked him, you know, uh, would you concede the results of the election? And he said, I'll concede if I win or some stupid shit like that, right? Yeah. Which basically means that you're not gonna accept any results other than you winning. And if anything happens other than you winning at the end, you're gonna call it fraud. So he's, he's planted that seed in people's heads before anything ever actually happened, right? Um, and this, I think this was a strategy so that he could claim that the election was stolen. Mind you, he has no evidence of this, right? Not only does he have no evidence, he never intended to bring forth evidence at all. There was no evidence to bring forth. There, there was no evidence. There was no evidence to bring forth. And he never intended to bring evidence. He knew there wouldn't be any evidence because he knew he was just making this up. But that wasn't the point. The point isn't to produce evidence to convince the people who know that you're lying. The point is to brainwash the people who are gullible enough to believe you into believing a lie, right? You don't need evidence for that. You just need to yeah. say something yeah. over and over again until they get it into their mind that this thing is true. You know, they have it, let the evidence be damned. Yes. Yes, I um, I also am thinking about the fact that in encouraging these people to do what they did, he threw his peers under the bus. And They're in there trying to confirm Joe Biden's <laughs> presidency and heaven forbid, what would have happened if they, they didn't get out in time? It would have been crazier. Yeah. So by his peers, I'm assuming you mean uh, Mike Pence and some of the other uh, leadership of the GOP, uh, right? Yes. Yes. And um, the thing is, they were probably convinced that they're his peers and some of his followers might have believed that they were his peers. They were never his peers because yeah, not he, has no, he has no peers in his mind. You know, his mission is power. It was never, he doesn't give a shit about the GOP or any of those politicians. He doesn't even care about his supporters, the ones that he told to go down and uh, take back their country with strength. He doesn't care about them. You know, there's, there's all this talk. There. No, I'll meet you down there. Yeah. That was the thing. He said, yeah, we are going to go. I'll meet you down there. He never showed up, right? <laughs> he never showed up and he probably doesn't know any of their names or care about their causes. He just wanted their votes. And yeah. he just wants yeah. to stay in power, you know, and now that he knows that that's not an option, his last minute ditch was to cause as much chaos as possible um, and then watch it on TV, you know. Um, so, yeah, he never had Mike Pence's, but all these people who like had Trump's back and all of a sudden felt betrayed by him. He's never shown loyalty to anyone. He expected all of them to show loyalty to him, but he's never shown anyone any loyalty. So. They're kind of just stupid for one. They were stupid for acquitting him of impeachment the first time. Um, Mike Pence was stupid for not evoking the 25th Amendment when he clearly his life was in danger and Trump did nothing about it. Right. He's clearly not fit for the office and they all know it. That's why half of his cabinet resigned, you know, yeah. but they resigned instead of invoke, invoking the 25th Amendment, which is what they should have done. Well, so. that that um also leads to me to talk a little bit about um the the republican party mm -hmm. and um you know if you think back historically abraham lincoln was a republican and right. uh 
you know, he freed the slaves. I mean, it was a whole lot of drama Basically. behind that uh, historically. Right. But so the Republican Party did not start out as this serious right wing group. Right. And here it is, you know, all these many years later that the Democratic Party and the Republic Republican Party, you 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 explained it the other day. Yeah, well, there was, there was basically a platform switch where uh, Republicans used to be liberal. The liberals were the Republicans. The conservatives were the Democrats in Abraham Lincoln's time. And it wasn't until uh, FDR and the New Deal to where that sort of reversed itself because the New Deal had realigned basically the structure of the entire economic structure of the United States to where uh, Southern states that were aligned with a certain ideology weren't necessarily benefited more. Um, black people uh, had chances, you know, it, it did some damage to the black community as well. Um, but, it, you know, cause this is where we get redlining from uh, the FDR era as well. A lot of people don't remember that one. Um, oh, I do. But the, I do. Yeah, but um, but the point is the two platforms in order to maintain not power, but to have a, a constituency, uh, basically they kind of switched ideologies, and there's a lot more detail that goes into yeah, it. Yeah, and I, because I I used I remember um, when I was really young, I used to you know because okay, so growing up um, it, in the 70s in the 80s but when I was really young it like in the 60s my um parents were you know devout Democrats you know they hate Republicans were hated you know Richard Nixon was you know black people no you don't you hate him this is what you do and so but I always knew that Abraham Lincoln had been a Republican so that was so very confusing yeah. at the time but right. that explains why um and, and I should go on to say that Republican, that Black people, uh, particularly from your, from the time when you were born and beyond, have historically voted Democrat with good reason, because they've seen that the policies advocated by a lot of the Republicans, you talked about Richard Nixon, were not uh, beneficial to Black people. All, every president of the United States um, prior to, I'm not going to give a year yet, but how many presidents did we have? 40, 45? Of the 45 presidents, at least 43 of them have been racists. That's a bold <laughs> statement <laughs> because that includes Democrats as well. You know, it includes Republicans uh, and Demo okay. even the Democrats we think were super progressive and really did a lot to help black people. A lot of them were racist, too. They were just less racist and their policies uh, less damaging to African-Americans than the Republican Party's post FDR. DR, you know, uh, Nixon, he hated black people. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson did not, you know, and he recognized that racism was bad. He's probably the first non racist president, you know. I won't even go so far as to say JFK wasn't well, racist. Well, it's so funny with JFK, I think the road that he traveled, the context in which he lived, black people weren't, he only saw them as waiters or you know, something. So they, they didn't, he didn't really see them at initially as pee -pee, pee -pee, right. people, people, I'm sorry, but, and he never became president. Bobby Kennedy mm -hmm. began and explored it from a whole different angle. JFK started it because Martin Luther King put a lot of pressure on him and Malcolm X, hey, so, this voting rights act, let's get it to get, you know, so right. it, it was it was a lot more visible. Um, but had Bobby Kennedy become president because his platform really, really wanted to address uh, the issues that minority people faced in this country. But that's because he left Hyannisport <laughs> and he went to Mississippi. You know what? I, I, I like to hope that once you are staring poverty in the face and you see people that are not eating or, you know, they live horribly, then if that doesn't change you, then you don't have a human soul. And right. So I think and so 
before they were changed, they were in positions uh, where they could be elected to high offices after they started recognizing that we need to do something about the economic and, and various other ways Black people are disenfranchised. That's when they were shot to death. You know? Okay, and then you got killed. They were both, they were both basically murdered uh, for a lot of those. Once they started to see Black, you know what? Black people are human beings. Maybe we should like try to bring them in. Nope, execution, right? Yes. That, that was just not allowed. That both was just them. not allowed. And, so, yeah, go ahead. But here's the thing, and, and this brings us back to, the, to today with the Capitol uh, insurrection um, and how the Black Lives Matter people were treated differently, tear gas immediately. It took hours before the National Guard showed up mm -hmm. for these people who were pillaging the Capitol. Um, when the Black Lives Matter folks were outside of the White House, they got what, tear gas, rubber bullets, everything. So he, should, he could go over and stand in front of a church that didn't even want him there. So what, my, my, my biggest thought of late is we are a different people than, and for me, my parents were. Mm -hmm. Lots of Blacks um, in my parents' age group left the South to come to the North because they didn't want to look at Jim Crow in the face all the time. Mm -hmm. And the Jim Crow, for those of you who don't know, all of these racist look laws where um on the um what was it the the when they were boycotting and then the freedom riders came down yeah. and they all wanted to arrest them for similar charges that they have for the people who were defacing the capital but the difference was they let the angry white mobs get to them before they were charged so uh, that ended ended so poorly but with that being said what concerns me is that all of these people did what they did and they're feeling some sense of, oh, yay, we did it. We stormed the Capitol. I mean, they're being arrested slowly. The charges are weak to me. Um, but why I do you wanna, think they I did wanna, it? Huh? Why, why do you think... We, I, we kind of talked about it a little bit about what motivated them, but what do you think um, deep down inspired them to do this besides Donald Trump's rhetoric? Do they really feel like they are a disenfranchised, not minority? Do they feel like they're a disenfranchised majority? Like, what do you think is going on in the head of the average? Okay, so so let, let's go to the extreme, the extremists of those people. The people who, you know, somebody had something on his shirt. I want to say... I forget what it was, but it was, I think it was referring to one of the Jewish camps. Mm -hmm. Auschwitz. Yes. So what, what is their thinking? I think it's, they might have seen in Donald Trump a guy who was a kindred spirit and that now it's okay to, to show your racist ass. Basically, that's that's mm -hmm. how I'm feeling. But I, I I want this leads me all the way to this. These young black people today are not my parents' people. Mm -hmm. A great deal of them, and myself included, we want to be peaceful in our protests. We want to be heard. We want to be treated like human beings. Um, herein lies the difference. We will not allow these racist people to come up close and personal because it saddens me to say this, this younger generation of people of color, they're, they're fearless. Mm -hmm. They're fearless. And so I think what the racists need to understand is, and I don't advocate violence at all, and you know that all my life, I'm trying to mediate peace, yeah. but I don't, this is not a group of people who are gonna take it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna take that. And I, I worry that it has come to, to this point 
where you stop and you consider, and I know minorities across the globe are thinking, well, I, I, can, I can't speak for across the globe, but it, here in this country, it's like you go out and you see people every day, people of, of different colors. And, and, and you wonder if the action that they take it, let's say if they do something and it's rude or you know it's around the mask wearing or whatever, uh, you think instead of going, oh, that was just a mistake. The, whole, the mentality shift is, were they being racist? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing. No. Because if people start to feel like, oh, you out to get me, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. Yeah. And now I, think I have to get you. And that's ridiculous. In terms of we are, we are supposed to be the United States of America. In the last four mm -hmm. years, we've gone so far back. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, I, I feel a buildup, uh, a psychological awareness from people of color that, okay, y'all going too far. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I want people of color to get, if three people watch this and you are a person of color, get that we need to be more cohesive. Mm -hmm. If you have color in your skin or if you feel some type of way, and can relate, then more of us need to see each other as a unified group. Mm -hmm. Because we will never, ever stop people from being racist. But I think they could be put in check. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting because I wanted to talk about um, the way that you approach, you know, you mentioned people of color, you know, some of the younger people, a little bit more aggressive, they're not going to take it. Some of the older generations just kind of used to it, maybe resigned to it. And then there's people in between and everyone kind of responds to what they recognize as racism differently. Um, for the longest time, I have been trying to be super diplomatic um, when I speak to Trump supporters, Republicans, MAGA people, trying to figure out ways to reason with them. Um, first, letting them know why they're supporting a racist or you know, um, why I think that they possibly even could be racist. Try to explain history to them that, that they're largely ignorant of. You know, if you have to explain to someone why the Confederate flag is racist, then it's an indication that they're pretty ignorant of history, right? Um, but I've been doing that this whole time. And then something occurred to me, like, uh, literally a few days ago, that um, these are not reasonable people. No. And you can't reason with unreasonable people. And every effort that I've been making trying to be diplomatic and trying to reason and educate and let people know what's so obvious is obviously going to fall on deaf ears because they're not reasonable. You know, if you could look at Donald Trump and listen to the words that come out of his mouth where he's saying there's good people on both sides and one of the sides is a group of Nazis, you're not a reasonable person. So I've decided to... I'm not going to be diplomatic anymore. I'm I'm calling out people for what they are. Um, not all Republicans are Donald Trump supporters, but all Donald Trump supporters are supporting racism. And most of them are in fact racist themselves. And I'm not shying away from saying that anymore. Whereas I used to try to make excuses for them and say, okay, they're supporting a racist, but they don't they don't realize it's racism. I, then you that's should giving them do your homework. Do your homework and see who he is. And I, I wanted to go back and, and, and say this, as you were saying that, it, it popped into my head when I was talking about people joining together. That includes white people who know that he's off the chain. Right. I, I, and I said people of color, and <laughs> that's because I know white people that I consider people of color in their hearts, but who get that racism, um, has been our undoing of late. Well, they, they probably get that racism actually exists. 
that it's still a thing. They're not one of those people who pretends that they don't see color or that they don't see racism or that there's not disparities between the black community, that they're not disenfranchised, that they're not trying to take away their votes. By the way, that's what that whole stop the steal was. Donald Trump's entire case is that in Philadelphia, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., and various black cities and states that are blue, those are the votes you need to stop, right? So it was really about disenfranchising the black vote, um, make no mistake about it. And that's what yeah. MAGA people want to do, They because they don't want black people to have a vote. They never really did. Um, and so that's another indication of the racism, you know, anyone... Uh, trying to stop the votes of mostly Black people in mostly Black cities, um, you're trying to stop Black people from having a say, which necessarily makes you racist. Um, anyone flying a Confederate flag is a racist uh, because it's a race. It's a symbol of racism, whether you choose to accept it or not. In its purest form, it's a symbol of racism in its purest form. The Confederate flag, please. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, MAGA people are racists, um, and I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it by pretending that they're not anymore. It's a racist ideology. Donald Trump built his his platform on racism. The, the first thing he said as a candidate was that the first black president born in the United States was not an American citizen. This is what attracted people to his candidacy. That's yeah. that was not something that he said. Um, you know, he didn't plan that to make people question his legitimacy for president. No, he planned that to get the racists to come out in favor of him, which they did. That's why all the white supremacists immediately endorsed him from the grand yes. dragon of the KKK to the Nazis that were chanting, Jews will not replace us. So he did this on purpose. Um, you know, so the, yeah, the MAGA people who don't think that they're in that racist crowd that were just giving Donald Trump a chance, you gave him a chance in 2016, and he did 15 more racist things after that. If you voted for him again, you're a racist. Yeah, Period. yeah, yeah. Uh, the evidence is clear. A absolutely. Um, so many things that he did to set this country back. Um, and I think that's the part that's most appalling that I remember saying to you, is it, you know, when we, we were looking at the results of, of the most recent election, mm -hmm. and I said it was, you know, those numbers were staggeringly close. No cigar, but close. And I Which said numbers? to you, the people who voted for him the and president, the people in the who presidential voted for Biden. Yeah. I'm talking, you know, some of them were like 10, 20,000 votes off. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I said to you, very concerned, I said, are you telling me half the country is racist? Um, it's a little bit less than half. Yeah, but, you said it's a little so bit less than that. 75 million people voted for Trump, right? No, um, is, that, they, is that not? Okay. I, I'm, you know, everybody, I'm sure. I'm going to say this. 75 million people voted for uh for Trump, 80 million people voted for Biden. That doesn't represent 100% of Americans. That's just the voting right. demographic, okay. right? So we have to keep that in mind. Of right. the 75 million people who voted for Trump, I'm willing to say that at least 5 million of them are not racist. And I suspect that the reason they voted for him is because it was in their financial best interest. Yeah, I, I was people. thinking economics as well. Yeah, people in the top uh, 2% they're going to vote for the Republican. It doesn't matter if it's Trump, Bush, Reagan, whoever, whatever Republican is running, they recognize that Republican economic policies benefit corporate entities more right. than democratic economic policies. And they yeah, benefit the top. And, and so on and so forth. All of that, um, all of that. So they are, they don't give a shit about race. Some of them may be racist, but that, that wasn't their motivation. They don't care about black people. They don't care about poor white people. They don't care about Black Lives Matter. They don't care about Nazis, none of that. They just care about the bottom line, right? And so that's that demographic. The rest of them are racist, but they still represent, if you look at the totality of the population of the United States, it's not 50% of the country. It's just that this demographic is given power uh, because of the way that the electoral college system is set up. You know, the, pop, the popular vote doesn't mean anything and most people don't even vote. 
you know, more people voted in this election, granted, than in any other election, but still millions and millions of people didn't vote. And so it's hard to know but what that, on that note. On that note, more people voted in this election ever in our history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it, it did turn the tide, but I wonder, you know, because Biden won, mm -hmm. we know that a lot of non-racist people voted. Right. <laughs> but the, the the sheer numbers, do you know the numbers of how many people voted in, in the last election uh, before Trump? Uh, you're talking about the uh, Trump versus Barack. Hillary Clinton? Or no, because he didn't. Obama was before that. So it was Obama, Mitt Romney before that. Um, but how many people voted during the uh, 2000, what, 16 or 12? No, this was 16. So it would be, yeah, 12. 2000, in 2012, um, uh, 54%. I, I, it doesn't give an exact number, but 54%. Okay, no, I was trying to figure out. Yeah. If the people who wanted, you know, to stop this racist ranting and all the behaviors that Trump did, mm -hmm. did the people who believed in him, were were there a lot of them as, as many? You know what I mean? Well, more people voted for Trump in 2020 than voted for him in 2016. That's the scary part. He lost the popular vote both times, but um, he won enough of the vote relative to uh, Hillary Clinton in 2016 to where he could win the Electoral College, right? He got 70, uh, he got something like 70 million votes, or maybe it was like 60 million and she got six. She won by like 3 million more votes than him, but it was low, right? Mm -hmm. Um, many more people voted for Donald Trump in the 2020 election than in the 2016 So election. that's what I'm saying. People on both sides, more people yeah. came out. This was, this was, this was such right. a fight. Um, I'm, well, on, on another note, um, let's just try to have some positivity going here now. Where do you um, think... I'm, I'm curious, how do we go forward from here? Because Biden is going to be sworn in in a couple of days as of two days recording of this video. Uh, he's going to be the next president for how long? Uh, who knows? But um, Trump is impeached for the second time. He'll have his trial. And right. depending on whether they convict or not, he'll either be allowed to run for president again or not. Where do you where do we go from here? How do we undo the damage that um, MAGA, the MAGA cult of terrorists? <laughs> you know, I'm, think, my, think, my language is getting more severe towards this group because, I, like I said, I'm not sugarcoating what they are. MAGA is a cult of terrorists. But how do we undo them going forward? Because they don't they're not going to go away. Trump is maybe going away, but they are, they're still there. Okay, so, so I think starting with all of these video posts thousands now right everybody wants to be on all of these social media thing they were taking selfies and doing everything that they could do mm -hmm. um to be seen we see them now they're not hidden behind the sheets they're not hidden anywhere you have them mm -hmm. you know who they are start clamping down and what the first thing I think that should be done, that they should, all of those people they found in the Capitol building should get the harshest punishment possible. They need to, who, who is going to pay a penalty for the people that got killed? I'm not talking about the girl who was with them because mm -hmm. it's sad because she's somebody's daughter but mm -hmm. the police officer who was doing his job. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, now this is DC, but that's a federal building, so that makes it a federal crime. You, mm -hmm. who's gonna be charged with his So the issue is murder. somebody needs to be charged with murder of a police officer, right? I think um, many, I think yeah. not one. 
I think they should, you know, they need, there's going to be an investigation and to see who was involved in the vicinity of the, the beating. I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but um, yeah, I totally agree. There should be an investigation. People should be charged with murder. Um, the, the irony in this case is that all of these, the people who murdered the cop are the same people who during Black Lives Matter protests were saying Blue Lives Matter, right? They don't give a shit about blue lives. They only care about blue lives when they're killing black people. When they're stopping them from committing an insurrection, they kill blue lives, right? right. So right. yeah, they need to be charged with murder, uh, absolutely. Um, but you know, as that's that's only that group. That's only the group of people who were involved in the insurrection. What about the culture of MAGA around the country? Um, what do we do to even to undo that? Can can Biden? undo the damage that Trump did? Can he bring actual unity? I don't know that he can undo that damage because again, we're talking about a group of people who wanted to do it. They wanted to be racist. They wanted to disenfranchise people of color in favor of their own matrix. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think in terms of healing and all of that, I think that's a, a bit down the road because people are still angry. And if you, in order for any conflict, even of interest to be resolved, people have to hear the other side. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a group who wants to hear the other side. They just want what they want at mm -hmm. anybody's expense. So healing, I don't know. I think it, 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 it takes a long time to change a cultural belief. It does not happen overnight. Yeah. As, as we've you know, witnessed that throughout the decades of people who thought one way and then figured out a truth and then they changed their mind. I, I think the one thing that he is going to do, I'm very hopeful, is that make the penalties stiffer. You don't get to get away with this. Yeah. Well, the pro you one of the problems is he doesn't really control that, you know, and this is my issue with Biden that, that I've always said two things. One, as the president, he doesn't really get to decide what the what the legal penalties are for any of these people. But also, he hasn't indicated that he's interested in really dealing with that group in terms of, you know, making sure that they are punished or dealt with. He his all of his rhetoric is about looking not looking to the past, looking to the future, bringing unity bringing in Republicans, joining all sides together in a kumbaya thing, which tells me that he's not really interested in harsh penalties or punishments or anything like that, you know? Well, well, I want to give him time and the opportunity to do better. Mm -hmm. And I think that he will do better. I think he's been around the block long enough to know what better looks like. This ain't better. This last mm -hmm. four years has been horrible, absolutely horrible, and a strain on relationships across the board. So what can he do? Um, I'm laughing in my mind about the kumbaya thing you said, yeah. but... I would say that one of the things that he could do is be more presidential, be more empathetic. I mean, that's a start. We're not talking about policies and, here. And We're just talking about- He's already started with that. He's already started with that. I yeah. don't know if you saw it I, on one of the things and he was like, he even acknowledged, because sometimes it's, it's simply about that. Acknowledge that, that you know I feel some type of pain. Mm -hmm. He said, if these were the Black Lives Matter people, it would have ended differently. Yeah. And you know, at, at everybody Black that I know has been saying that. Mm -hmm. And and it's you know so it's true it's true um, I think that he has a very good shot people a lot of us are ready for change um, because and and I guess we could as we segue towards the end we ain't going back nobody's going yeah. back right you know I'm, I I um, 
I keep thinking about all of the militant groups that I saw growing up and um, how difficult it was for them. Because, you know, we had extremists and we don't have time to talk about it now because we were almost at our mark. But um, like the Black Panther Party and, and, and people like that. Um, but these people were pushed really, really hard up against the wall. Mm -hmm. And their numbers weren't crazy great, but I don't want us people who are not racist to feel like our backs are up against the wall mm -hmm. because it's a different time. You're not going to get the same response. I guarantee you won't get the same response. And yeah. I, I, um, you know, I advocate for peace all the time, but some people, you know, um, I feel like the line in the Terminator. They can't be reasoned with, they won't stop, you know. Yeah. And, and, and well, yeah, and the, again, the, the platform of, I, I mentioned MAGA before, MAGA stands for Make America Great Again. It was a doomed expedition from the beginning because that's that whole uh, slogan is about going back. You know, it was about right. them wanting to go back to the way things used to be, you know, right. back when the white people were in charge. And it was, it, we're never it going back. It's, and that's so yeah, much for us. it's like you said, we're never going to go back there. You no, know, it's not first of all, white people have always been in charge. They've never not been in charge. And so, you know, they, they in their minds, you know, white people have lost power. We had a black president. We need to stop this. No, the white people have always been in power. And that's fine as long as other people get to be in power too. But we're never going to go back to minorities being marginalized the way they were before, which is what they want to go back to. And so Make America Great Again was always about this idea of going back, which is not progress, you know, and, no. and hopefully no. maybe the way forward for uh, Joe Biden or future administrations is to get people to embrace a slogan that's about progressing to the future and not going back to the past. The further back in time we go, the more racist it gets, the more uh, division there was in the country, legal division. I'm not talking about, you know, we're divided now. We have political differences of opinion. We have different splinter groups, but legally there was division in the country the further back in time you go. And we're never gonna go back there because that's bad for the country. So maybe the way forward is for Joe Biden to not just embrace it as a slogan, but actually, you know, um, I mean, look, he's he's putting in people of color, women in his uh, cabinet, whether or not they're great picks or not, that's that's debatable, but at least he's, he's presenting the image of unity, inclusion. Uh, he's speaking to the GOP. He's, he's, the language he's using is trying to go for this unifying theme which is progress you know and so maybe that's the best we can hope for as long as he's in office and maybe that will spill over to the next administration uh we need to bury maga uh and i, I don't mean bury in the sense of any sort of violence you know <laughs> people to take it that way but i mean bury the idea of going back to the past we need to kind of let that rest because that was not clearly not successful we are not better off in 2020 than we were in 2016. We're objectively worse by every metric, you know? Yeah. Um, and so clearly MAGA was a failed idea that we need to let go of and move forward. And I think that uh, that's a good start. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> you're talking about going back. America wasn't great for people of color. <laughs> Nobody's yeah. going back. It's that's, we're done. We're yeah. just done. We're not going back. And um I hope Joe Biden can do what he what he says he wants to do. Yeah, I do too. And I will say on the final note that um, you know, America has never been great in practice. You know, it's always been an experiment that has had moments of success and and setbacks. I think the idea of America is great and uh the constitution if properly if like employed is great and the flag and what it stands for is great. One nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all is a great idea. If only we could actually ever do it, you know? And then once we can employ what America actually stands for, then it will be great, but it takes progress to get there. We have to we, go forward. We have, and we got a minute to go, regressed. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm we've regressed now. I don't think that we've regressed beyond recovery, though. You know, it was almost like um, a two steps forward, one step back type of thing. Maybe under the Trump administration, we may have gone two steps forward, two steps back. And so it's kind of, we need to start over again from 2016. Um, maybe we went back further than that. I don't know, but it's not unrecoverable. I don't think we'll ever go back to, you know, the, the way it was in the 60s, you know. Um, so we're, we're going to go forward, but um, progress is the name of the game. That's how to make America great. We may never be 100% successful. There's always going to be division. There's always going to be, you know, uh, different ideas that people have about what makes this country great. But as long as we're moving forward and making things better for the average American, um, I think that's that's about the best that we can do, you know. And so it's it's about the journey to greatness, not necessarily that we ever actually were great in the past. It really kind of broke my heart um, to to recognize that a lot of the insurrectionists were former members of the military. You know, as a as a veteran myself, I just you just wonder what went through their minds when they were people that swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and then decided it was a good idea to raid the Capitol and commit an anti-constitutional act to stop people's right to vote, which they had previously fought for. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's over. Um, I think we will be better off, certainly with Joe Biden, um, for the time being anyway, I'm reserving judgment because I mentioned this to a friend of mine, not as terrible as Trump doesn't equal good. Right. And so it's a test. We need to give them a chance. Listen, I, I will um, close with uh, a simple <laughs> statement that we've heard a million times and everybody knows if you don't, you should. Let's keep hope alive. Exactly. And that's all we can do. Yeah. And um, yeah. I hope people I hope people are celebrating Martin Luther King Day. And if you don't know much about the man or the legacy beyond the name or the avenue that you grew up on, take the time to get to know it. You know, um, he was more than just a name. He was more than just a face. He was more than just someone who gave speeches. Look at the uh, time, um, contextualize some of the events that are going on today, compare them to the civil rights movement. Um, look at what he did, look at what he started. And um, I think that that would be a good use of time. Uh, for. Yes. Exactly. Um, and hopefully some people doing that will, um, you know, maybe their beliefs will be changed. Um, I don't think I can change anyone's beliefs, but just the learning of history um, from an ob as objective a history as you can learn, that's really what it takes to change mindsets. And, um, and I think we can pretty much end on that note. Thanks for doing this, by the way. Thank you for um, having me again. Um... We'll see. Thanks, everybody who watched. Yeah, um, I have a feeling I, I'll make this public. Um, this is already on. Uh, it'll be on my Facebook, but uh, I'll make it. I'll probably put it on YouTube as well um, for the people who are not uh, connected to me via Facebook. And um, yeah, you, just to solicit some of their thoughts. I'm sure you have people you wanted to show it to as well, and they probably have some strong opinions to add on what we just talked about. But uh, we'll do it again. Um, different subject, maybe something lighter uh, in the future. But uh, yeah, until next That time. would be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll let oh, you choose the, the topic. But yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. All, right. All right, take care.